Anybody else wish that Stephen O'Mell was wearing the wig that he wears in Arrow when they flash back, like in the first season, you know, that nappy long hair that he had? Anybody else wish that he had it in this movie? Yeah. What's happening, my film nerds? David the Film Junkie here, bringing you a film review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Secret of the Ooze reboot. Out of the Shadows! That's right, this is the sequel to the 2014 hit. It was a hit. It got everybody's attention back on the Turtles. So here we are again with the Ninja Turtles, this time taking on a whole different kind of mess that's happening to New York City. This time around, the Turtles are struggling with, well, being trapped underneath the city. Of course, they saved the city from Dr. Kurt Connors. I mean, from Shredder. That was amazing Spider-Man. But they can't let it be known. So Will Arnett's character, who's now named the Falcon, is known for saving the city from Shredder for some reason. But this time around, Shredder is back. This time not playing like an old, broken down Shredder in a fucking Transformer costume. Now this time he's younger. He's got some scrapes on. He gets out and of course he's got Bebop and Rocksteady. He gets um, that one guy Baxter or something Baxter. I forgot his name. Professor Baxter. What are you? Whatever his name is. Tyler Perry. They turn Bebop and Rocksteady into, of course, a hog and a rhino and it's nice to see those familiar faces. But there's also another familiar face in this movie which got a lot of people jazzed up. Krang! And Krang is, of course, from a whole other different reality, a different dimension. He wants to come through, take over the city, take over the world with the Technodrome, which is also a great little fan nod, which we're like, oh my god. It's there. The turtles must put away their differences, come together, and save New York once again. So what did I think of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows? I mean, this movie is a piece of crap, but what the hell were we expecting? Not much expecting from this movie. I mean, when I was watching this movie, okay, especially during the first Krang sequence, I was kind of like, ah, oh my God, that voice. I mean, it's, it's what's his name? Uh, it's something, a guy from Everybody Loves Raymond doing the voice, but it was very like... <laughs> but after that first scene that you see that, I was going, well, that was pretty much how he sounded like in the cartoon, so they pretty much nailed that character. As well as nailing the turtles, and I think they're a lot better developed in this movie. They're not as all over the place like they were in the first movie. They're more together, and of course, what I really liked about the first movie is like they nailed each and every one of their personalities and the struggles that they have, you know, coping with how different they are. And this time around, it's the same thing, and they're struggling to be a team, and they fuck up. They do fuck up because each one of them has just a different mentality of what they want to do, and of course, they ha they're just trapped down there there and you know who else wouldn't be but i must say their layer is pretty fucking cool you really can't complain what they did with the turtles because they nailed all their personalities krang is just like how he was from the cartoon shredder yeah a lot better this time but yeah bebop and rocksteady was great to see them take on the turtles so pretty much if you were a fan of the cartoon, you're going to like those scenes that they're all fighting because it's like, wow, now I'm seeing the cartoon I used to watch in the early 90s being represented in 2016 and everything, of course, is upgraded. Especially Donatello. I know he's smart, but he's got like stark technology. Tyler Perry just plays one of his Tyler Perry characters. It's nothing great. I mean, I know what Baxter ends up turning into, but I don't know if there was a secret scene. I didn't stay for the credits if they like kind of hinted at that or not whatnot uh but you won't really see that he's just goofy with thick glasses will arnett i hated his character in the first movie hated his character again in this movie what a waste of a comedic talent i mean he is strictly doing this for the paycheck he has nothing funny to say it is completely phoned in it's annoying why did they bring him back i mean they had it where he was to he was the hero of new york city he took on shredder Will Arnett took on Shredder, and that's what everybody in the world believes. Stephen Amell. Love Stephen Amell. Love him in Arrow. Great guy. He's playing Casey Jones, or just a guy who's named Casey Jones. Elias Cotillas is Casey Jones. This Casey Jones is just Stephen Amell with a really much higher voice than what he is on Arrow, and it's just really extreme. There's even a moment, just like in the first one, where he's trying to explain things that happen to somebody who's higher up to them, and he sounds fucking retarded. Megan Fox's April O'Neil tried to do that with Whoopi Goldberg and that was like one of the worst scenes in the first movie where she's trying to explain that big ninja turtles were saved her ass and it's just the same thing with this. They just kind of recycle that whole thing with Casey Jones and I'm going 
Didn't they learn that the first time? And then of course Megan Fox, which she's a terrible actress. She's terrible April O'Neil, and she's just there to look hot, which is great. She's always conveniently in the right places. She always has that right amount of exposition, <laughs> expositional dialogue. There you go, Dave. Holy crap, it is getting hot in here. It's fucking 100 degrees today. Tangent, Splinter's a little better because the first one he looked really, really gooey. This one they put a little more hair on him so he looked a little more splintery and he's just normal, giving out his wisdom. Not that much and uh, you know, it's just, everything's extreme. The fight scenes are pretty cool especially when they're taking on Krang. BWAP and Rocksteady, all that stuff's pretty cool. It's enjoyable. It's entertaining. It's mainly for kids. Yes, it is. What really sucks, though, and what I always constantly think about is like, yes, these turtles are really huge and they like jump around, slide around everywhere. Where's the ninja part? That's what we're missing in this movie. They're not stealthy really at all. I'm surprised they haven't been seen by more people in this universe, but surprisingly they haven't. But who cares? Guys, there you go. So if you like the Ninja Turtles cartoon and don't want anything like serious, you just want a straight up adaptation of the cartoon, the one that you watched all the time, then you might enjoy this movie because there's a lot of nods to it. They really, you know, Krang and everything and just the personalities of the turtles. It all works. What doesn't really work, April O'Neil, Casey Jones, not the same kind that we want. We wanted a, I wanted a grungy Casey Jones you know, like the one in the first Turtles movie. So there you have it, guys. That is my review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. Let me know if you saw it down below in the balls area and let me know what you thought about it. <sighs> yeah. Heroes in a Half Shell. I mean, they're just... Yeah, I mean, I know they wanted to make them different, but now that I think about it, I didn't have really a problem with their look, but I'm just thinking they can't really be too stealthy when they're that huge. So. And I'm so glad this time around... The product placement for Pizza Hut, because if you live in New York City, you're not going to be ordering or you're not going to be stealing whatever, how they are, they get the pizza. They're not going to be getting a bunch of Pizza Hut pizzas. It was actually like a non-name brand mom and pop, just a regular New York pizzeria boxes that were everywhere. So Pizza Hut was like, no, nope, we're not going to sponsor you. So it just made more sense because I hated that in the first one. Anyways, guys, I'm going off again. Talk to you later. And thank you for watching, you beautiful people. You go ahead and hit that like thumbs up button if you'd be so kind. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Subscribe to my other channel too. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and visit filmjunkie.com for all my videos.